I done did that. I did care. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Quackcast. This is Quackcast number 590. I'm Ozone Ocean, and with me is Tant Serene Pit Face and Baines Muck. Hello. Baines. Hello. Hello. That's all of us. Hello. <laughs> okay, so this week we're chatting about the uh, favorite superheroes, superhero films we had. As younger people, or maybe even now, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, what what are your favourite superhero movies? What have your uh, favourite superhero movies been? Um, it's an interesting topic, um, and uh, we can all have a have a little opinion on it. There's no right right answer to it. It's uh, it's something to chat about. So, before we get into that, I have to bring up the featured comic. Featured comic this week, Kwai gave us the feature. Good old, good old trustworthy Kwai. And you know what she did this week? She gave us DNR for our feature, which is a comic uh, also um, as Tance uh, worked it out last time, Do Not Resuscitate. So take it away, Kwai, with DNR. Hello, this is Kwai Degakuse, and the feature I've selected for this week is DNR by Arbor Sides, and it is rated M for Mature. Matt is a gurney pusher, and has seen quite a few characters since the first day on the job. Experience an illustrated diary showcasing meeting people looking to be saved in a psych ward, witnessing the saggy, baggy skin of a former adult film actress, and the queasy, hair-raising side effects of a piercing gone wrong. DNR is the kind of story that needs to be resuscitated many times over. The art is drawn in black and white, using black inked lines framed inside comic boxes drawn with a felt tip sharpie. The fonts are hand-lettered. Strap into a hospital stretcher and read dnr by arborsides rated m and that was quiet the talking to us about dnr okay so after that we have the feature gum wallace has given us another theme tonight well today or whatever time this quite cast is being recorded for everyone for me it's night for these guys it's the day um his feature m- music this week was Space Pack, which was a, a comic that I featured um, the week before last week. So this music is a gentle, dancey progression, leading into more and more urgency and danger. Very sci-fi and slightly spooky, with a little explosion at the very end. But is it really the end? Take it away, Gumballs, with the theme to Space Pack. <laughs> Pack, which is a comic by Stingy, and it's rated 
E for everything and everyone, everywhere, all at once. Which is another sort of superhero film. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen that yet? No, no, because I'm lazy and I want it to be on digital, and I don't think it's on any of the digital services that I subscribe to. So, bugger. I think you have to buy it digitally still. So. Really? Oh, okay. Well, I might do that. Then. Yeah, I went to. That's what I did. It was pretty good. Really? You saw it? Well, the first time I saw it was like on an ad <laughs> on Instagram, and it just, you know, how these ads. Um, when you look at Instagram stories, they just play automatically. And I thought, wow, that looks fantastic. I want to see this. And then it just flashed off without telling me what the name of the bloody film was. So I had to keep hunting through until I found wow. the ad and um, was able to find out what it was called. And, you know, it's, it hasn't been easy for me to track down. But, yeah, I, I want to see it too. They say it's like the better version of Doctor Strange. I actually haven't seen Doctor Strange. Uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once was the preview, just the preview, like made me so emotional. I watched it multiple times. Like I found it very powerful. Um, Maybe the David Bowie song had something to do with it, but it's just like, it's so well done. It's such a cool concept and it seemed to have so much heart. And then like the cat, just the cast of actors. I have, yeah, have you? Yeah, are you talking about everything, everywhere, all at once? No. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. That's what you yes. Said. Yeah. Okay, I thought so for a second. Yeah, I liked it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I. Me too. See Actually, look, well, yeah, I liked it a lot too. Maybe it wasn't as great. I'll just say, it, maybe it wasn't as great as I expected. I expected it to be mm. like A plus plus. It was an A. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's, it's gotten a lot it's of pretty hype, good. So. Yeah, a ton. That's why exactly. That's what it is. Yeah, so much hype. Um, but it was really cool, really good. And uh, short. I loved uh, short round in Temple of Doom. So to see that actor come back, uh-huh. and is he literally him? took a thirty year of acting for thirty years. That's him. Yeah, and he came back to acting, and this was his first movie back. Oh. It's like holy crap! That's awesome. And was he, was he great her husband? Yeah. Oh, he's adorable. Oh, my God. <laughs> sure. What a name. Yeah, so sweet. And uh, I love that. That was great. Yeah. And I guess he's like a stunt coordinator or something been for a long time. So he like, like he's probably doing a lot of his own, like where he fights in the movie and stuff. Like, oh, really? He's, a, he's part of that world. So, yeah, that's really cool. And, I'll, of course, Michelle Yeoh is awesome. She's in everything these days. She was amazing. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis was amazing. Yeah. Oh, right. I can almost can't believe that's her. This, 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 is, this is a super uh, film. Apple thinks- sort of. So it's oh, like- are we recording? Yeah, we are. <laughs> Just babbling. So, yeah. Anyway, it was good. <laughs> Sorry. People- she, it's kind of a superhero movie. She's given these abilities. You know, it you is. Know, yeah, it has the superhero flavor it's- to it. It really does. It's um people yeah. say it's the, like the alternative film version of um Doctor Strange Mouth of Madness, which is the most recent mm-hmm. Doctor Strange film, which I haven't seen either, but it's on my list to watch on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that you can take you can. Oh, sorry, Ben's gone. Because of the dimension hopping, the multiverse yeah. aspect of it. Multiverse, yeah. And it is great to have different takes on the same concept. You, it doesn't all have to be wrapped up in the MCU. They're not the only ones who are allowed to do superhero films or dimensions or anything creative and clever like that. Oh. So, yeah, I really want to see both those films. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, taking it back to superhero films, like, We'll we'll go all the way back to the beginning. What was the superhero film that you grew up with that you liked the most? We did talk about this in the Patreon video, though. So, yeah, I said my piece, so I'm probably not going to really say much. But if you would like to hear my specific take for whatever reason, um, go watch the Patreon video. 
Uh, not love, very good at hyping stuff. I'm sorry. What was that? I have to stay. I said if you don't have to stay, but if you want to stay, you can eat on the podcast. We don't want to lose you. <laughs> yeah. That's true. You'll never lose me. I'm always with you. Just look up at the stars. <laughs> <laughs> By the pit. Well, okay, thanks, for, thanks for being the start of the podcast, and to, for telling us about everything, everywhere, all at once. God, that's a fucking annoying title. <laughs> <laughs> tough title. Yeah. You think like strange in the multiverse of madness? Tough title. That one's even tougher. That that's an easy one because they're all different words, whereas everything whatever that's, that's that those are different words but they're so related so they're confusing you know it's like seashells seashells on the seashore it's uh <laughs> my brain twists them into the same thing well, mostly like a, a tv like other than the superman movie like it was mostly tv superheroes who i was into i was in my brother and i were into comics in a big way um, it was Superman and Batman and the Super Friends, but also it was like the live action Hulk series. Ah, oh, that was awesome. Uh, That's with sad Lou Frigno, music. Yeah. With the like, iconic sad music. Yeah, exactly. And just sort of a banner just wandering. Yeah, like Benji um, or just walking the earth. Or something. Kind of thing like. We would watch the Little Tobo right after that. And it was the exact same show. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Little Tobo would get crazy and mad, and he would just expand into a big green monster and purple <laughs> shorts. He was a dog tense. A dog who would travel the world, get in <laughs> adventures. <laughs> oh, yeah. One day I think the dog. Pardon? The dogs are always trained. Incredibly. Yes. Yeah. I would like to see a superhero um, movie. Movie. I don't know. Maybe it is. Um, like I don't know if you remember. I mean, you may have mentioned it before, but I was distracted, and I didn't hear it. So, stop me if you have already said this. But uh, there was this uh, Superboy animated series that they had like Crypto the Super Dog or something. Oh, yeah. Um, like a little oh. dog with a little red cape. <laughs> so, so the dogs are always <laughs> super well trained. They are always Lassie level super well trained. Or, or even Rex level super trained. So I would like to see a superhero movie where the super dog is not trained yet. Now that would be a super challenge. I <laughs> like your bloody yeah. puppies. That's yeah. why you're thinking of that. <laughs> <laughs> your naughty little dogs running around. Like the Beethoven franchise. Superhero. Yes. It's like it, it, it could be even a horror flick because I tell you, untrained, like puppies. Puppies are untrained anyway, but I mean, like puppy level super dogs are a, a danger to society. Basically, that's all there is to it. And oh, the, yeah, entire, the entire movie would be Superboy having to basically keep the puppy from destroying stuff. And Super peeing everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like oh ba babies can be a problem. They tackled that in The Incredibles, the Disney or yeah. Pixar film. And the, Jar Jar. Um, yeah. Which was quite a, quite a clever take on things. Baby coming into its uh, superpowers before it knew what to do with them. So, oh, and there's something like my. Go on, babe. That little punk, what's his name with the powers? That little brat. 
Baby Yoda. Oh, oh, in uh, Mandalorian. No. Yeah, Mandalorian, Grogu, or whatever it is. Grogu. Yeah, so brat. Okay. No, I was actually thinking of the little kid, the, uh, with powers. I know you guys hated the movie, but it was the James Gunn's brother. James Gunn's brothers made this movie or something. It was a little kid with Superman's powers. Oh, yeah. And he um... was a monster. <laughs> Obvious, I'm, I'm sorry, I've done something. Yeah. Insidious, but that's not insidious. it. That's what I want to say. It. Yes, insidious. It's not yeah. insidious. It's, um... that's not, it's not insidious, but it's kind of like that. Yeah. With a little can... brat. With yeah, the... a little brat. You know what, though? I mean, that's why there is this genre of horror kids like uh, children of the corn level you know horror i think it, it stems from the fact that when you have a baby when you have a toddler there are a lot of things that can definitely make you desperate at times so and and then when they grow out of it you forget and i know yeah. that because like now that i'm raising these two puppies, they are really good souls. They really, they are, they are awesome puppies, awesome dogs. They, they really want to please. They, they want to, to see you happy. They want to be with you and stuff. And even despite that, you got, like, I got times where I was literally crying out of desperation. Mm -hmm. Things were that hard. Oh, man. Uh, and and it, this thing has a name apparently, and it's called the puppy blues because they are so much like they, they are a handful growing up until you get them, you know, to get what they should do when they go into the bladder because they cannot, like they they cannot hold it physically. They cannot hold it. They have to. The the system needs to mature. So you're and, saying and superheroes would suffer these very kind of problems when they're um yes the babies. But because you would have a super dog or a super baby, then you would get a good character that is the baby or the dog. They are not evil, but they still make they still are super dangerous and they still make people desperate around them. <laughs> so that would be an interesting thing. I have never seen it. So this, I would like to see that. To this see film that. Baines mentioned was Brightburn. Hmm? The film Baines was talking about was oh, Brightburn. Yeah. That is the one, which um, I didn't, I didn't like because it it didn't follow like a trajectory that worked. It wasn't a logical trajectory for this character. It was like his brain suddenly just went, just got. Yeah. Taken over. He, there was no real reason for him to turn into a psychopath. It was just suddenly psycho. Like it was yeah, because that's true. It was like a horror movie. But I liked it. I liked it as a horror movie. But you are right. Yeah, I remember you guys making this good point last time, and yeah, you're right. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, you, you you should like what you like. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's true. Uh, I mean, it's not I wanted to watch again, but yeah, <laughs> I enjoyed it fun. So, like, imagine, what it was, but, yeah. like, Dennis the Menace, but a superhero kid. Because oh. Dennis, <laughs> at least the, the, the stories that I have seen and the movies and stuff, he's not portrayed as a kid that is looking for mischief, but he just walks into it by, you know, curiosity, by trying to do the right thing not really knowing how to do the right thing and, you know, dominoes from there. The American Dennis the Menace, but when you go for the, yeah. the original, I don't know if it's original, but there's... I there's, haven't seen the original, though, so I don't really know. There's an American the one and there's a British one and they're very different. I don't know which is original, yeah. but the British one actually has a black and red striped jumper that he wears, like the um, the Brightburn character. And he, <laughs> he is evil. Is, okay, yeah. So, yeah, then you can also have uh, the psychopath, I guess. But, um, 
I'm talking about because it's more of a child. If you get a, a kid that is evil, things are pretty easy because you can hate the kid. But if the kid just is a kid, oh yeah, it's not that easy in the sense that, and you can sympathize, you know, with whoever is really like really wants to. Like punch the kid to to the next kingdom or something, but uh, uh, at the same time you realize that it's not really the kid's fault. Like the intent isn't there. So I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, I would find that a big challenge on the superhero level genre, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it would also get ethical if you get a kid that walks into a situation that causes really serious damage. How do you handle that? So on and so forth. So. Yeah. Well, okay, so how did they tackle it in the first big superhero film that I watched was uh, Superman, with, um, Christopher Reeves. And I think that was a pretty um, kind of standard kind of beginning to him. He, he starts out like as a little baby and he's, um, he's, he's very anodyne and uh, benign, isn't he? He doesn't start lasering everything with his eyes by accident and sneezing and blowing the place down with um, super breath or anything like that. So they they tackle that as an extra good little baby, even though he's with a foster family who has no idea of his powers. Mm. They don't even know he's an alien. He's just a foundling. I guess they go the route that the, the powers sort of kick in later on a little bit, like the for some reason, like without explanation. With puberty. That, yeah, so sort of like that's when he starts getting the laser eyes or running really fast. <laughs> I love that film growing up because that was such a um a beautiful entrance into the world of superheroes it was Mm -hmm. you know that music by um uh john no someone waters i can't remember um whoever did the music to it it's amazing amazing music john williamson john williams not john waters different man um but yeah the that was a, a a fantastic positive beautiful entrance into the world of superheroes with a very different take on the superheroes we have now like christopher reeves was a very kind of weirdly alieny handsome in his way but mm-hmm. he wasn't incredibly muscular and this the suit is just a suit it's just shiny lacquer or you know spandex or whatever but it it it's not there to add extra muscle definition to his body. It's not there to have weird textures and plates and, and shapes. The man played the superhero with his own his own physicality and his own presence rather than, you know, being, um, like, uh, enhanced in a kind of bizarre way with props and effects. And it, it worked. It was a very simple portrayal of a superhero, but it still still worked. So yeah. you don't... And, and very upliftingly optimistic as well. I mean, I remember watching it. It just was a really super feel-good movie. Uh, through and through, in a sense. Yeah, definitely. Bright colours, which is another thing you don't necessarily see, especially in DC mm-hmm. superheroes in this world. Yeah, bright and fun. And I think where the most recent superhero movies have succeeded is in capturing, deliberately capturing what was what worked so well in that Superman, as in the ones with a more positive tilt and the ones with more brighter colours and, you know, a bigger kind of feel. Those are the ones that succeeded best, you know. And I mean mainly the um the Marvel a cinematic universe those ones mm-hmm. have been the most successful and they've worked the best and the ones from the dc world that have worked the best are the ones that have gone back to that as well like uh, wonder woman or aquaman 
I haven't seen Aquaman, so it's I don't worth know. I mean, it looks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Jason Momoa would be eye candy for you, so definitely. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, just haven't gotten around to it. And lately, I don't really watch many movies, which is weird for me. But uh, the doggies know. would enjoy it, I'm sure. Oh, the doggies enjoy anything on the screen, uh, like yeah. as long as it moves. So <laughs> yeah, they're good. <laughs> the screen, the top episodes for the dogs. The what? So, Prior to you have to screen the the littlest hobo mm. series for them. Or super oh, dog. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. I'll it. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> there are actually a whole <laughs> bunch of superhero um, pets that they've done comics about. So if you really want to get mm. into those, look up uh, casually comics um, super pets on YouTube. Super this lady pets. talks about them. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I remember Crypto the Dog comic book covers, like part of the Superman, Superboy family, but yeah, yeah. you mentioned the cartoon. I've never seen the cartoon. Maybe it started as a cartoon. I don't know. There are uh, other superhero uh, creatures. The only one I remember is Crypto. And, uh, the only one I remember is Crypto. So. Oh, there's 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 yeah. the monkey in um from the Super Friends. That's another superhero creature, and there's there's a mm-hmm. whole bunch of different things. That, um, Gleek. Gleek. Gleek, Gleek, yes. Oh God, what a stupid, pointless creature. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, before him, there yeah. was actually actually um in in the the earlier version of that cartoon they had a um a, a boy and a girl i can't remember you know what their names were and they had a dog as their super pet so yeah. there you are there was a dog even back then there have been super dogs but uh on the big screen there's been no big um uh, super pets so far that i'm aware of no Unless we can count Pixar incredible kind of stuff, I'm not sure if there was something in there. But um, no, don't so, remember. Any. Have you guys seen any of the Marvel Universe films? Yeah. No. Baines is lying, as he's wont to do. Baines is, is regaled us of uh, how he loves Endgame and all that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no, that's somebody else. I think it's a pit face. <laughs> <laughs> so, what Marvel ones have you seen, Tom? If I'm being honest, I'll go on. Uh, it's garbage. Yes, it's garbage. I don't want to watch that stuff. So. <laughs> junk food. Junk food is guilty pleasure food. So. Yeah. The Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe are quite um, disposable because they do so many of them and they are mm. quite quite junky, but they're pleasant and they do ca- capture a positivism and there's a lot of humour to them. So I think all in all, they're quite pleasant films. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, some, a lot of them blur together in my memory from from those I have seen so like the only ones that stand out to me really are Doctor Strange which is my favorite I really like that one and I still feel that it is the best of the bunch and uh, the other one is uh, Guardians of of the Galaxy if it counts um, yeah, love that like one. The first, the first one. Yeah. Like, They're great. Uh, Doctor Strange. Yeah. Yeah. It gave it gave like this um, to me. It gave this uh, vibe of uh, like spaceballs vibe, which I really liked. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, it's so good. It's a great little ensemble cast as well in that one. So we're not focusing on one character being a superhero. We have Drax and um, Re something, Remora, Remora, whatever her name is. Um, Gamora. Gamora, that's it. Um, and Groot and Rocket Raccoon all together. And it's, it's great. And instead of, you know, having... The weirdness of the other Marvel Universe ones is we've got a bunch of superheroes on Earth and then you've got to reconcile the fact that there are many superheroes and that's going to change the culture, that's going to change the world because there's people with superpowers and then, you know, like, do police defer to them? You know, how how does that change laws? And, like, how does how do the normal people relate to the fact that now there are suddenly, you know, 500 million superheroes all over the place, not just Thor and um, Captain America, but there's so many others. So that's a bit awkward. But when you come to the Guardians of the Galaxy, then you have whole bizarre worlds that work with these superheroes they're not just weird super powered people in a world of mundanes like a two tier system like they've got on earth, they've got superheroes and they've got normal people and there's a whole bunch of superheroes but instead in, in space everyone's like kind of weird and super and weird so there's there's not that kind of um, dichotomy which I like and in the Guardians of the Galaxy they're just fantastic weird characters in in a universe of fantastic weird characters and you get to see this this uh, whole sci-fi world that exists around them and that works just so much better in every single way than the um the superhero ones set on earth although you know not to say the ones set on earth are bad it's just when you get into the bigger level ones like um uh like um the Avengers and uh, Endgame and all that, especially the last films, where you have a, like a ridiculous amount of superheroes, which were really comic events more than something you know, that was invented for film. It just gets a bit too much. So yeah, I do like those um the smaller ones and even the smaller ones of the the Marvel universe that happen on Earth, like um Ant Man. That's that's so cool. It's really small and limited, and it works so well. Oh, that wasn't actually a joke, but, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> unintended. Yeah, Ant Man and Ant Man and Wasp. But there's some really you know, good ones. Some of my favourites, and of course, I like Captain America because um, the first Avenger. Because uh, that's um, uh, that that's very um, like uh, there aren't any superheroes around. He's the only superhero in that world then, and it shows the true origin of that superhero. Whereas all the rest don't show the true origin. They show like a an updated origin of an update of an update of an update. So this shows mm. superheroes actually, you know, forming in the the time when they actually did form, which I like. And it, he makes sense there because he has you know, what powers? He has a shield that stops anything, and he has muscles. <laughs> That's like nothing compared to Super all of us. What's that? Super muscles. Super muscles, yeah. But I mean, they're just muscles. He's not even as strong as Credible Hulk. He's He's just a man, so that really doesn't work in in a world where you have you know like super incredible superheroes who can lift. I I don't know tanks. He can't even do that. So, but they in that film they did give him a world where he did work and he was a superhero, which I like. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it can be yeah, tricky. It makes sense that. He started off as a figurehead, hmm. more than anything. He was a mascot. Mm -hmm. A mascot who, who uh, became the reality of what he was pretending to be. Yeah. Which was good. He too. grew into the, into the hype, in mm. a sense. It's a very well-structured film, too. It's one of the better structures. A lot of people sort of don't like it as much, but for me, I really like it because it has such 
a good structure like as a spy film and an intrigue film and you know, he starts out being a wimpy little guy and you see him you know changing into something bigger and better and the film has like distinct acts and then you know you see him like battling nazis and then battling hydra and then this great big final battle you know he like he um it has a great progression to it yeah which so many of the marvel films do not the superhero comes fully formed has you know barely any kind of um any kind of run up and then they're fighting these weird cthulhu monsters for most of it which are, you know i go on yeah. and on about but that's what they do um i i honestly was never a fan of uh, superhero comics per se not because i had anything against them i mean they just weren't as widespread in greece when i was growing up i guess or at least the access that I had wasn't as big. I mean, um, European comics were a lot more the thing. Uh, but, like, I don't really know the origins of most superheroes, so when I see them in the movies, they don't feel wrong the way that they are portrayed. Like, I'm thinking of uh, Doctor Strange. I really like the way that he evolves. And he starts off as this super doctor, in a sense, that is uh, also very conceited and very, you know, up in a pedestal, worshipping himself. Um, so that, that works really well for me. And uh, how he deals with whatever it is that he is facing. Um, I don't know really his original origins, <laughs> honestly. Uh, but this fit well with the character, at least the character, I mean, and how he progresses. So it was. I, yeah, I liked that it. is. I mean, his. Yeah, I didn't really know his comic, his comics very well, but I basically know the origin story is kind of, is what they did in the movie, mm. like you know, sort of expanded and this and that and changed a little bit, I think. But uh, yeah, that was basically it. He was a, this arrogant doctor and injured his hands and like learned, went and learned the mystic arts and stuff. Um, it, it movie, knows, man. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. I like it every more. I, I like it every time I see it, yeah. And um, I, like, I liked it so much that I don't want to watch the other Doctor Strange movie just so I don't have the flavor spoiled, in a sense. Like when you eat something really tasty and you don't want to eat something else, and change the, the aftertaste. <laughs> um, so, yeah. There are mixed I'm, reviews. Yeah. Of hmm? yeah. I've heard mixed reviews of uh, Multiverse of Madness. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I like yeah. the after like, post credits uh, scene. I don't know if it was on Doctor Strange or on some other Marvel movie where he sort of appears in front of Thor and he refills his beer while he talks to him. I, I like that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm still not ready. To spoil the aftertaste. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. There are a lot of different ones that are coming up. Now they've sort of been through their main sequence, which is all the way up to end game or mm -hmm. whatever they were. I can't remember. Um, so they've gone into these other ones like um, Shang-Chi and um, The Eternals, which is going to be a whole new you know, thing into itself. And um, they're, they're mixed, you know. Um, like Shang Chi is is okay, and it's got some really great stuff in it again. But the plot isn't very creative. Yeah. And it's basically, you know, just a stand a standard nineteen seventies kung fu film 
mixed with a you know modern 2000s marvel superhero film and they've just married those two things together and it's uh it's right. quite simplistic but the parts of it are really really fun especially the you know the kung fu stuff but then you've got eternals which is just a horrible horrible mess unfortunately <laughs> it's just so badly done in every aspect I, mean, I think it falls into that trap that i wrote about like a couple of blogs ago um that when you have a character that is immortal there are ways that you should write them that they don't at least what i've seen because i haven't seen the movie but from what i've seen of the motivations of the characters and the way that they act eh, it doesn't sound very promising no, no. so i haven't seen it yeah it's quite weird you know in the immortal sense because they're, they're all immortals and they they've completed their task which is what they were set to do and now they're going oh I wonder what we're doing now yeah so it's a um it's just so badly written in every kind of aspect it's a shame because they've got fantastic actors to play the roles and the actors do a really good job so no fault against them and their performances so if you don't have a proper script and a good director so oh. there's only so you can do it the script's, the script's not bad as in you know dialogue and the scenes nothing wrong with that it's just the story is bad so yeah it, it's, it's okay really yeah when i say it's... script i'm i meant like the yeah. story oh. and dialogue it's yeah. just a weird a bad story and bad editing because it maybe the direction was was good we don't know you know maybe the whole original format of it was was really good it's just been edited together in a shit way <laughs> to make it not work because yeah that's that's how it kind of turns into something that's so bad because um scenes that are meant to develop and meant to have a certain weight don't because of where they're placed like you you have a developing mystery and then you s reveal the big massive mystery way too early so then you know the the point of that is is no longer um it, it no longer has any effect like if you're doing like without moonlight you're setting up a big mystery with you know iris or whatever mm -hmm. you're not gonna reveal that halfway through the story in a very vocal like way and just write exactly what the whole mystery was you know, that yeah. would be terrible that would be an an, an amateur thing you know, but that would be a ne neophyte thing to do and that's what they do in this film twice yeah okay um i guess there are every rule in writing can be bent or broken there is no such thing as unbreakable rules but you have to know what you're doing so yeah exactly because it's not so much the like the convention or the rule they're transgressing it's they're taking away the power of the mystery mm -hmm. you know the other thing that i have noticed when you have ensemble casts of extremely superpowered beings that are not really weak in anything so they don't sorry they don't really need and, and sorry for the bike that you can hear i'm really sorry about that mm -hmm. um so if you don't have like if you have superpowered beings that are superpowered in everything they don't really need the other people in the team so it becomes really redundant or like and some characters are going to suffer they, they are not going to be given anything really important to do or it's going to be framed as important but in reality it, it won't be like it could have been done by literally any other person in the team so yep and that's the, yeah that is a trap that happened a little bit in endgame as well that happens because in... okay oh, i'm sorry yeah no no you go that happens in so many marvel films yes 
Yeah. And it's not it's something that is easily remedied in the sense that all you need to do is to have super powered beings that are really super powered, but they have a very serious limitation in something. And it's not necessarily in power, it could be a mental thing, or it could be an emotional thing, it could be something that can literally nerf them for something. And they cannot function without A, B, or C character helping or creating a situation that will help them function. No, it, it's not really all that hard. I mean, you could even have like three supermen with the exact same powers and still make it work like they are all very needed in doing certain things. Mm. Uh, the problem is that they just plop the characters in the story and they don't really establish any kind of need for cohesion. So, so you are not convinced, like, why are these characters all together? And, and if you have an army of superpowered beings, why are they struggling this much? It shouldn't be that much of a struggle when you have, like, I don't know, 200, 300 characters all swarming against this one God-like being that, however, is dependent on something that is detachable. <laughs> sure of detachable. <laughs> yes. Like, you had Sauron reach out with the ring, and we know what happened by a not-so-super-powered guy. So when you have people that can literally like uh, sever things with their mind or crush things with their mind, blah, blah. What are you doing, people? Why are you rushing everyone? Yeah. And not using your power? <clears throat> That's the whole thing that I usually have issues with, and I'm sure I'm going to get blasted for it. So. No, that, that's a good point, yeah. Um... These, these are things that were invented to work in the comics because... You know, they're, they're events and they were meant to sell comics. And across all the different comics, basically, because you can introduce people into different series that they would normally not in get into because they see, oh, my favorite character is going to be in this big event thing. What are these other characters that are also in there? Maybe I'll check out those as well. Just so I've, you know. Yeah, definitely. Story. It just, it just uh, like, for example, I remember uh, reading this crossover thing that Marvel did about uh, the death of Spider-Man a few years ago. And I just read it for the death of Spider-Man, honestly. <laughs> uh, but, um, and they had, like, a, a crossover from a lot of different titles. And um, they had, they had these super powered guys that every single one of them could have taken care of the big bad but the setup was such that you could you could buy in a sense mm -hmm. that they needed each other and that yes okay spider-man died because of the circumstances yeah so he could have been safe but circumstances made it so he died so that that was interesting, and, and I appreciated that honestly when I read it. So what I'm saying is, in comics, maybe they set it up differently than in movies. Yeah, well, that's maybe. True. Often they do. What, Baines, what about your experience with superheroes? Who superhero films? We haven't really. We've only got six minutes to go, so. <laughs> Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, we were. It's okay. Yeah, I've talked about them so much on the podcast already over the episodes. Uh, yeah, it's okay. What but, was uh, the first one though that really got you? Uh, well, as a little kid, I guess Superman one, Superman two for films. I mean, mm -hmm. um, like I said earlier, like it was mostly on TV, which is more kind of connected to you know comics because there's their ongoing stories different episodes um different issues you know different chapters so um now in theory now that we're going to more series on streaming and stuff maybe it, it's a better fit 
Um, a lot of the stuff I've seen, I don't really like all that much, actually. But um, but yeah, it would have been super, early days. It would have been Superman one and two for movies. Okay, um, that's all there was really. There was tons tons of stuff on TV though. Yeah. Well, there was. Um, I mean, there, there was the Batman film of the nineteen sixties Batman. That was a bit silly. Yeah, I never saw that much until later. Yeah. And there was also the Spider Man film, which was made for TV. Never seen it. <laughs> wow. I can't believe I haven't seen it, but I haven't. Yeah. And then they didn't really, superhero films didn't really start until the, the Batman film, I think. The. the the eighty nine Batman film. That's when they really yeah. I think so. That's when you got um so many of the things. It's hard to remember all of them, but they did sort of yeah start. Um, <laughs> Shaft, Shaft, a superhero movie, kind of. <laughs> well, then if we if we include like Shaft as a superhero, Shut then we think of Rambo as a superhero, Rambo two at least, and Chuck Norris. Yeah. And Commando. Yeah. The runner of that stuff in movies, yeah. Which, you know, you, you, you can sort of think of them as superhero films in a, a more realistic version with action superhero characters, which were, you know, based around the ridiculous idea that a man could be so good at Kung Fu, like Bruce Lee, so good at karate or whatever, that... He could kill all these people and you know rescue the woman and everything like that, which basically is a superhero thing because that none of that's realistic. Or a man could be so good with a gun mm. that he could he never has to reload and he just goes through and blasts and his his muscles are so powerful that he can you know beat anyone. Which was you know the Schwarzenegger film, which is it's totally stupid. Now we have millions of muscly actors who aren't you know that important in films but back then we had Stallone and um, Schwarzenegger as the muscle man actors as the superhero muscle men realistic muscle men in films and yeah so there is an argument to say that they were superheroes because their their muscles and their sure. uh, Chuck Norris's kung fu or karate sorry gave them power beyond what you can actually get from <laughs> Kung Fu and uh, you know muscles. Oh, the Rocketeer dance. Very good suggestion. No, definitely an old-fashioned superhero character. Um, Flash Gordon, which uh, people forget. That was uh, 1980 or something. 1981. He's a classic old-style superhero. If you guys remember Flash Gordon, I love Flash Gordon. Flash, ah, oh, he's the savior of the universe. <laughs> Flash, great Queen soundtrack. We could even think of speaking of Queen soundtracks. There's the Highlander, another kind of a superhero. Oh, they definitely. They couldn't die except you know the decapitation. They hid swords in skin tight outfits. So. Gun trousers. I hate, I hate to imagine where they shift the sword. So no, you love it though. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know they hid their identity from the world. Hmm. They did so, indeed. They are they are superheroes. We're calling it now. This superheroes mm -hmm. and this quite I, I, I like the the, the series. I like the series, so yeah. It's a superhero series. Deal with it. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. bye.